aussi d'abord. C'est bon. So I just want to present again quickly the uh, student project um, uh, from Saint Etienne, who uh, built a, um, a Google Plus clone before Google Plus came out. Um, just to show a little bit what you can do, what a, what a student who is just um, uh, graduating, uh, an undergraduate can do uh, in a couple of months' time. And he presented this at WW 2012, and this should give you all <coughs> a lot of courage to, to do the same. So, um, um, here he, he, uh, this, is the, this is the project which shows what he did after, after he, um, uh, uh, I spent a few months with him uh, refactoring his application. He's first starting off um, uh, right, creating a new account. And of course, the problem is that once he um, creates an account, he's going to be all alone on this account. Um, here he is. Here he is, all alone, all alone on his account. Um, he's going to create a web ID um, first. Uh, this is not necessarily the first thing you might want to do, but this shows how easy it is to create a web ID with a public key. There you go. You just need to click one button, and that's uh, uh, then your certificate is in your subject alternative name, and your uh, public key is in your profile. So just in order to uh, show a little bit uh, what you can do with it. He's, he's just going to quickly log into one server. Um, uh, it, uh, it asks him for his certificate. And this solves the problem that he doesn't need to enter and type the URL, as we saw in the earlier example, right? Um, here he's just showing that uh, the nice thing is about this is that you don't even need an SQL database. So this might be problematic for SQL vendors. Everything is just saved on the file system in terms of uh, Turtle, which is a W3C standard. Uh, the resolution here isn't very good, but um, you might be able to see uh, different what we were seeing earlier, different lines of each, uh, Turtle. I'll show you something, some of that uh, later. And um, here he is now, all alone, on his uh, profile. And this was the big problem about creating another so silo. So after refactoring, uh, on RDF, he was able to just go to see Tim Berners-Lee's profile, drag and drop Tim Berners-Lee's profile onto his friend's uh, wall. For example, find my profile, drag and drop that onto his uh, faux file, friend of a friend file, onto his uh, uh, friend's wall. And there he has already two friends connected, uh, connected to him. So Tim Berners-Lee's profile is on the W3C, and my profile is on bblfish.net. And slowly here, his interface is fetching all of the friends' profiles from their servers. Right there you see Andre uh, in blue, and his JavaScript is fetching all of that asynchronously. Here he found uh, Dan Brickley, who uh, was the author of the Friend of a Friend ontology, and he added him as a contact, right, contact. Uh, uh, he, doesn't, uh, he hasn't met Dan, uh, Dan yet. And so now he's uh, showing you how you can do all the normal stuff you do on a friend uh, on, a, on a social network. So. Once you, ma once you master this technology, which should not be, which is something which takes a bit of time, but is quite easy to do if you have the right uh, guidance. So uh, always go to ALF and go to the web ID mailing list and the linked data mailing list if you need some help. You'll find all of the knowledge there. You'll be able to build these types of applications relatively quickly. Now testing them is another matter, right? But still, it's pretty impressive. So um, what I'm going to quickly show is um, if you want I can hold the computer over there so yeah you can, can uh, close it here what I'm going to do is oh, you can close it can I remove this I didn't have web access control and so what I've been working on recently is building web access control let me bring it open um, I'll just uh, thank you and um, with web access control, what we're doing now is we can uh, create a profile. For every resource, we can have a metadata, and the metadata a link to an ACL file at, uh, web, using the web access control ontology. And this thing can say uh, who can access this resource, right? So it'll, it'll be. It'll be, um, it'll be some kind of graph saying you can access this resource um, uh, in read mode, right? Uh, and um, um, what is it? Something like that. Uh, and
and it might say, for example, that so we built a group on another server of all the users who participated here, managed to get a, a FOF profile, and this group uh, is on bblfish.net currently. We can move it somewhere else. And it, will, it, it is just a group saying that a number of users on different servers described by different profile documents um, were, were part of this group, right? So if all of these are web servers, we can, we can point to people through the URLs of those people described in those documents. And then we can have an ACL that says all members of this group and uh, this person here, for example, can uh, access this in read mode. And everybody, uh, and only um, me, and only I can access it in write mode, this document, right? <coughs> so you can do distributed access control, which can get a lot more sophisticated than that. I'm not sure if I have time to show what it looks like. Yeah, it's an example. So in terms of this sharing in the camp, labs camp, so Imagine let's we do it in Barcelona in the summer and people look for couches and I heard from people who use couch surfing that in the summer they disable, disable profiles because they, they get hundreds of requests for the couch. But if someone says, oh I don't want to offer too publicly my couch, but for the people who come for this camp I want to support it, the person can say, make this offer visible only for the people who participate in the camp. So once people register and we, as the people who organize the camp, add them to the list of the participants, those people then will be able to will have a chance to discover who in Barcelona offers couch only for the people who participate in the, in the, in the camp. So, so in that case, yes, this would be, um, uh, we share, we share uh, 2014 uh, and, um, and group, and this would be the group file for all members of we share, and uh, that would list the web IDs of all the people who are part of it. And so then make sure that only people could give preference to people who are part of WeShare and their family or something like that. Any other network, so that's yeah. it. Um, I could show how it works, but I'm not sure people have the patience for that. Um, but I'll do it until the batteries run out. <laughs> um, we just need to... Pull this down. You know how this works? Now it's good to you. So that's a good challenge. So essentially, I'm going to start the server here. So this is going to be really techy. And um, I have a file such as uh, card.ttl, which is going to be the profile I'm going to send onto the server. And this is using LDP, the linked data pro protocol that's being specified at the W3C with the help and support of Oracle and IBM. And I'm working for Apache to write an implementation of this. And um, this is the type of command which shows just how low, uh, a very low level how I'm going to send this file up to that server. So I have this 2013 on localhost, that's a collection, and I'm just going to post that content to that server. And so there it's going, it's making an SSL collection, and now it's uh, uploading that information. If I now want to just get that uh, file, right here, that's just a curl that does a get. It will tell me that there is, it's unauthorized. So now I'm going to upload the um, ACL file. And this says, for example, here that uh, uh, people have access to the document card who are in the class we share group that I just created. And I'm going to upload this using uh, post again. So this is just showing, because post is such, these are just pure HTTP um, calls uh, that every, everybody can get, uh, use, a tool that everybody can use. And here I've, I've created the ACL on that server. And now if I get it, 
I get the content in RDFXML or in fact indeed in, in any type of other format that I want to uh, just to show that it's not the syntax that's um, important to us but uh, the this was RDFXML, this is Turtle, but it's the semantics, it's what's behind it. So that if people prefer, if there's some people who prefer JSON-LD, other people who prefer Turtle, other pe people who only have RDFXML parsers, each one can, can, can get the same information and then make user interfaces for people, if they're, um, for people whatever, on whatever devices they are, as uh, Elf was saying, either be it on a small cell phone or for people who are blind, or for people who are um, uh, who have big expensive computers and who like to walk in 3D virtual spaces. So that's it for this example. Thank you.